The world around us is smart. We think your education should be smart too. With the FlexPath learning format from Capella University, you can set your own deadlines and leverage your experience to move forward at your pace. Visit capella.edu to learn more. Capella University. Don't just learn, learn smarter. WQE 99.1 FM Noonan, WBRQ LaGrange, WZV 90.5 FM Lionville, JC Sports Networks. Tune in Thursdays from 10 a.m. to 1030 to listen to the Sustainable Brown Girl radio show hosted by me, Ariel Green. Each week, we'll learn ways to be more sustainable in our everyday lives. We'll discuss exciting environmental news, ways to get involved locally, and we'll hear from women of color who are saving the planet in their own unique ways. Be sure to listen to the Sustainable Brown Girl radio show every Thursday at 10 a.m. Happiness can be achieved simply by going outside. Take a look at the world around you. Pay attention to the things outside your world. As the winter comes and depression becomes more dominant in most people's lives, getting some sun, taking a short walk can help you to find brief moments of peace and happiness. This is Dr. Lewis Boynton wishing you a happy and harmonious day. Good Seed Christian Books and Apparel located at 205 South Greenwood Street in LaGrange. They offer a large selection of Bible books, commentary, and other study help. Gospel music, men's suits and tie set, pastor's robe, choir robes, and more. Ladies' dresses, Sunday hats, and handbags. Textbooks for Bible college students. Church supplies, communion set, gloves, soundtracks, and more. Good Seed Christian Books and Apparel at 205 South Greenwood Street in LaGrange. I am Apostle Deborah Harris, Pastor Apostle of Kingdom Connected Ministries International at 121 Hillwood Circle, Noonan, Georgia. Presenting Connecting the Kingdom, Connecting Kingdom Citizens, Kingdom Businesses, and Advancing the Kingdom of God in this hour. Join us each Tuesday at 10 o'clock a.m. with guests who are sharing their faith, business, and ministry. Good morning, good morning, radio audience. This is Apostle Deborah Harris of Kingdom Connected Ministries International, where uh, Elder Harris and I are leading pastors, founders of that ministry. And we are in the studio today. I am in the studio today. He is here with me in spirit and through prayer. And I am going to talk to you today about... Uh, continuing in the faith, continuing in the faith. And, you know, guys, it is um, so absolutely amazing how our God, our Father in heaven, Elohim, Yahweh, Jehovah, he's able to keep us moving in the right direction and continuing in the faith faith as we submit ourselves to him now outside of sticking with him and staying with him it's going to be hard it's going to be really really hard but if we continue to submit our lives and our hearts and minds to him it's going to be easy or easier uh that's not to say that we will be without uh, trials or tribulations or or anything of that nature, 
But it is to say that God is able to keep us. He's able to help us. And that has to be the conversation that we have in these next um, hours as in this age or days as in this age because things are happening. Things are happening and they're happening beyond our control. We have no control over the things that are happening in the, the earth realm, but we do have control over what happens with us. So this is why we want to continue in the faith and we must continue in the faith and we're going to have to have these conversations about continuing in the faith uh, I, I tell you uh, this for sure that because of what has already happened and let's let's look even past 2020 things were already brewing things things were already happening um, and it has been so much happening before 2020. And a lot of that was leading up to 2020. But now that 2020 has happened, now we're in a place where we're going to have to really become more vigilant and sober, more alert to the things that are happening around us so that we will have what we need in order to continue in the faith as we should. And so this is why I want to talk to you this morning about continuing in the faith because, because of the fact that it's so much happening around us that if we do not figure out how to continue, or if we don't, if we just, if, if for some reason we allow things that are happening in this earth realm, that's happening in society today, to pull us off the mark, then we will be those that will be pulled off the mark. We're going to be those that will be that will be pulled out of the ark of safety. That's going to stray away from the faith, fall away from grace. However you want to put it, we're going to be those that would be in that predicament, and that's where we don't want to be. So as I pondered and thought about, you know, what what can I share today? So many things to share. And so many things that I can talk about, but uh, this kind of stuck with me uh, to encourage believers, encourage believers and perhaps uh, invite others to come into the ark of safety so that we can hold fast in these evil days. And, and you know, I would love to be able to sit here and, and just really... Um, pump your spirit and, 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 you know, share a lot of good things with you. But this is the truth of conversation that needs to be taking place today. Guys, let's hang in there. Let's hang in there. Let's hang in there together. Let's walk together in the spirit of Christ so that we can enjoy his love, his peace, his uh, holiness, his righteousness. That's what, that's, that's where we all need to be. And I'm here to tell you today that if you can hang in there with Christ, Christ, continue in the faith, you will definitely enjoy his peace and his joy. And that's what we want, um, each and every day. So let's look at so much for the, for the intro, but let's look at, um, second Timothy, the third chapter. I'm sorry, the second chapter, the third verse. And I'm going to read this from, uh, I'm going to read it from the uh, King James Bible. It says, thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier, uh, as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No man that warreth entangled himself with the affairs of this life that he may please him who have chosen him to be a soldier. And if a man also strive for masteries, yet is he not crowned except he strive lawfully. Now, that's, that's a lot right there in that, in that particular verse, in, in those three verses. But what I want to do, I want to highlight, um, I, I, I want to highlight starting out the third verse, and that is, uh, thou therefore endure hardness 
endure hardness as a good soldier. And, and, it's, it, and, and it's simply saying endure suffering, endure suffering uh, along with me as a good soldier of Christ Jesus. And this is what Pasa, the Apostle Paul was telling young Timothy, who uh, was really, uh, he, he, was, he had a lot in front of him. He had a lot that he had to deal with uh, concerning the church of, at Ephesus, which was a large church. It was a spiritually sound church, and, and it was a gifted church. And the Apostle Paul knew, uh, having uh, taught Timothy in the ministry and brought him up in the things of God, he knew that Timothy needed encouragement. He knew that Timothy Timothy needed uh, what he was giving him in these uh, letters in in First Timothy and in Second Timothy. Uh, Timothy was a young pastor. Uh, and he was telling Timothy, he says, you know what, no matter what is going on, no matter how it's happening, he says, I want you to endure hardness. I want you to endure suffering. You're going to have to go through some things. So is it with us in this life. So is it with us. Jesus himself even said that if we would come after him, and follow him, that we were going to have to pick up our crosses. And, and, and the same cross that he had to carry, the same cross he had to bear, the same cross he had to uh, carry up Golgotha Hill, that's the same cross. Um, figuratively speaking, it's the same cross that we're going to have to carry. You know, we're going to have to go through some sufferings. We're going to have to go through some things in this life that are not going to be pleasant. They're not going to be good. And, and this is why I want to talk today to say to you, continue in the faith. We've got to continue in the faith. It doesn't matter what we're going through. It doesn't matter how bad it is. But we've got to lock in and hold fast to the Lord Jesus Christ and his life in us. When we do this, when we do, do this, this is how we're going to be able to enjoy his peace, enjoy the joy that he gives us that's unspeakable and full of glory, the peace that he gives us that's, um, that's uh, the peace that surpasses all understanding. When you are suffering, when you are going through some things, you are, we are supposed to be an example of his peace. We are supposed to be an example of his joy. People are supposed to be looking on us and thinking, why is it that you're not depressed? Why are you not crying and kicking and screaming and just ready to, you know, fall away from life? Why, why are you not doing this? I know you're going through. I know you're having a hard time. I know, you know, perhaps your children are acting up. Your spouse is, your spouse is acting up. I know that things are not good for you. How is it that you are walking in this peace? And that is because you have the Lord Jesus Christ living mightily in you, and you are holding fast to him. You are continuing with, with him. And, you know, John writes... John writes in his word in uh, chapter 15, verse 7, he says, abide in me. And, and if you abide in my word and my word, who is Jesus Christ himself in the logos form, he says, uh, if you abide in me and my word abide in you, you can ask for what you shall and it shall be uh, done unto you. So in other words, uh, Jesus is saying to us through the apostle, through the, the apostle John, that if we abide in his word, if we abide in him and let him abide in us, then we can come to him and ask for whatever it is that we have need of. And he says, I will give it to you. And that's how we need to do this. Continue in the faith. That word abide means to continue in. It does not mean you're in and you're out, but it means to continue in the faith. And that's what is so powerful to me. That's so, it's so, I mean, it's so real. 
and, and we've been given the word. We have the word written in what we uh, call and refer to as the Bible. The Bible from Genesis to Revelation, we have been given at least that much of the word. And you know, people is funny and it's and it's it's somewhat uh displeasing because uh there are those people that are trying to dig up other uh books of the Bible but we haven't even mastered the ones that we have. We're not even doing what those books are saying. We, and, and, and some people, I've you know, heard somebody say, well, the other books will bring us to a better truth. What better truth do you need uh, or truths do you need other than the books that have been given to us readily between Genesis and Revelations? And I know, listen, I know that it's been, uh, the Bible has been translated. I know that there are a lot of things that have been left out, and I understand all of that. But the truth of the matter is, okay, if we're not mastering again what's between Genesis and Revelations, I mean, I'm trying to understand what more do we need. All we're doing is adding more on our plate to do but yet you haven't done first things first. And the most important thing is accepting the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and walking with him. And we have New Testament scriptures that, that are going to help us to walk with him and to continue in him. That's what those scriptures are for, to help us walk with him and continue with him. And then New Testament teachings Point to the fact that we need the Holy Spirit. We need the Lord Jesus Christ by way of the Holy Spirit in our lives, living through us, living in us, living with us, leading us, guiding us, teaching us, helping us. That's what we need. And if we get that, then, you know, we're, we're pretty much doing what we need to do. And, and the Bible is uh, strongly a book of love. It, it, it speaks about love. Even the Song of Solomon, it talks about love. And then the the expression and the theme of love is throughout the Bible. From Genesis to Revelation, when we fell from grace, sin crept in. And mankind would have been destroyed. But God, who loves us so, uh came up with a plan and God says, I'm going to send my son to redeem them back to me. So it's about love and the love that we have is, is, has been sent through the Lord Jesus Christ and, and God, the father is still working out his plan of redemption in us, through us and with us. And here we are, uh, in this life, we're struggling, but God really wants us to stick with the Lord Jesus, allow Holy Spirit to live mightily in us, and then uh, be able to continue in the faith. And I, I cannot stress to you, um, I really cannot stress to you the importance of continuing in the faith. And, and, and that, and, and again, we look back at John, the 15th chapter, verse 7. If my word abide in, if you abide in my word, and my word abide in you, um, you can ask. And again, that word abide, that word abide means to continue. Let the word of God continue in us. We need to continue in the word. And I'm telling you, my God, we cannot we, if we do that, we cannot go wrong because, again, suffering is going to come. Look at what we've already been through. And I'm telling you, after we made it out of 2020, 2020, after we made it out of 2020, over into, I would say, mid-2021, I mean, that was a time of praise. And, and, and we even understand that things were not Things had not gotten better. If we've made it to 22, yes, we certainly should be praising, shouting, and thanking God. But I'm here to tell you that there are going to be other things that's going to come our way. 
There are going to be other things that are going to be happening in this life that we're living right now. How are we going to handle those things? How are we going to handle those things? Are we, are we going to allow them to take us out? Or are we going to continue in the faith and pray for others that are weak on the journey? Because here's the deal. We're going to always have those that are weak. And when we have those that are weak around us, we're going to have to be those that are strong. That's what the word tells us, that the strong should, should bear the infirmities of the weak. So when our brothers are weak, we need to be those that are strong. And when we are strong, we're able to uh, do the things that are necessary and needful. So uh, if I look further in 2 Timothy 2, 3 through 5, verse 4 says, Soldiers don't get tired up in the affairs of the civilian life, for they cannot please the officer who enlisted them. They, so in other words, what is Timothy saying? Timothy is telling uh, young not Timothy, Paul is telling young Timothy, listen, Timothy, I want you to continue in the faith. I want you to continue with God. And you cannot afford to be with the, uh, people that are around you. You cannot afford to get caught up with this, those people that are around you and the people that are doing the things that they're doing. You're going to have to, you're going to have to stay focused. Stay focused. And that's, that's another key point that I want to make today. We've got to abide in the Word of God, continue in the Word of God, letting God continue in us, letting the Word continue to live mightily in us. But we also need to stay focused. We cannot afford to get tied up in the affairs of, of civilian life. For then they cannot please the officer who enlisted them. So so let's keep our focus. How do you do that? By staying in the word of God. You keep your focus by staying in the word of God. You keep your focus by looking to Jesus, who is the author and the finisher of our faith, and not um, trying to do things that are, that are in this world, not trying to do things that are in the world and that are distracting. Uh, and listen, guess what? We have had so many things that have come as a distraction. We have had so that have come as a distraction that have misled us, that have misguided us, and that have told us to do this as opposed to following Jesus, as opposed to sticking into his word. We cannot afford to uh, be distracted in this hour. The only way we're going to continue in Christ is that we've got to stay in Christ. We've got to keep our eyes on him. Uh, the psalmist, I believe it was David, says that we are to look to the hills from whence cometh our help. All of our help comes from the Lord. Where should we be looking to? The hills. We should be looking to God who's higher than anything that will ever happen, anything that can happen, anything that wants to happen in this world. We're looking to God to look to God. He is the author and the finisher of our faith. He is the help. We've got to look to God. Can't afford to do anything else. Can't afford to look anywhere. We really can't even look to the government. We've got to, in most cases, we're going to have to look past the government. Because the government, uh, if they are swaying away from the truth of God's word, and if they are swaying away from the life of God that comes by way and through his word, we're going to have to look past them. We've got to look to God. And, you know, some people look in other places, but what, what do you gain by doing that? What, what can you get from that? What can you get from that? Nothing. You can't get anything from that. You're only going to uh, get displeasure. Uh, you're, you're going to uh, 
fall into other yokes and bondages. Um, when you start looking to other means as opposed to look to God, keep your focus. Don't let things distract you. And that's going to require a life of prayer. That's going to require a life of prayer, which is another area that I want to emphasize as it relates to continuing in the faith. How, how can you continue without prayer? How can you continue without prayer? Now, the Apostle Paul admonished us in many, many places in his uh, uh, writings to the different churches. Um, he, he admonished us in many, many different places in his epistles as he wrote to the different churches. And when he wrote to the church of, at Thessalonica, he said to them, he said, listen, guys, he said, uh, let me just turn that very quickly because I want to read that just to uh, make sure that we understand what he was saying. So in 1 Thessalonians, the fifth chapter, he says a lot to this, to this young church. He says a lot to these young converts in Thessalonica. He says to them, um, I'm going to start uh, with that verse 16. He says, rejoice evermore. That's verse 16, two words, rejoice evermore. In other words, always be in a posture of rejoicing. Always be in a posture of joy. Always be in a posture of looking to God, uh, expecting the things from God that you know you need in this life. My God, um, he says rejoice evermore. That, that is a powerful statement, I'm going to say, as it relates to uh, him uh, encouraging these young converts as it was with him encouraging Timothy, a young pastor in ministry who has a, he has, who has a, a, a great job ahead of him. So he says, oh, he's telling them, listen, you always be joyful. And listen, hey, joy, let, let me just make sure that we understand. Joy is not the same thing as being happy. Happy, to be happy is so closely related to uh, a, a it, it's, it's an emotion in your flesh. It's one of your fleshy emotions. Sometimes you're happy, sometimes you're sad. You know, you can be happy one minute, you can be sad the next minute. And you know, that's just who we are. But, and, 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 but that's who we are in our fallen state. But in our regenerated state, God says that we should be joyful. What is joy? Joy can be everlasting. Joy can be permanent. Okay, so this is why the Apostle Paul, he's teaching these young converts, he's telling them, he says, listen guys, he said, always be joyful, always be joyful. You can be, you can be. And then check out the next thing that he says in that verse. He says, never stop praying, never stop praying. Always be joyful, never stop praying. Wow. Wow. Never stop praying. If we continue in our continue in the faith, if we continue in the faith, we will we will always be joyful. If we continue in the faith, and it doesn't matter what suffering you will deal with, it doesn't matter what you're dealing with in this life, you can continue to be joyful. You can continue to be joyful, but we've got to keep praying. Prayer is one of the key things. Let me back up. Let me reiterate. Uh, abide in the word. Letting the word abide in you. You can go to God and you can ask him for whatever it is that you need in this life. Even during your times of suffering. 
you can pray to God, you can cry out to God, and you can say, God, this is your word. This is what you said to me. So this is what I'm asking you. God will answer. Then the second thing I said to you is to uh, be focused. In other words, we cannot get so caught up with everything else that's going on around us. Because as as Paul said to Timothy, Timothy, he says, listen, Timothy, he says, don't get caught up with the affairs that are uh, the, the affairs of this life, that the things that are going on, because there were a lot of things that were going on with Timothy and the and the church at Ephesus. But Paul was telling him, listen, don't get caught up with that. You need to stay focused. Keep your focus. Keep your focus. And then this third thing that I'm talking about is to never stop praying. We can, listen, everything that will happen to us, everything that we need to know, everything that we need to understand, it is going to happen by a life of prayer. It's going to happen by a life of prayer. Never stop praying. Now, let me say this. There are... There are several, um, well, I'm not going to say several. There are, there are some different ways. There, there are a few, a few ways of looking at this never stop praying verse here. Um, one way for sure is that we need to always be praying. When, when it says never stop praying, this is New Living Translation. That simply suggests that we're going to always be in a posture of prayer. Always, always, every single day, every single awakening moment, every single opportunity we get to pray, we must pray. We cannot afford to do anything else. We've got to pray. And a person who's walking in the blessings, the favor of God, the joy of God, the peace of God, that is a person who has a prayer life. They're not worried about what's going on around them. They are not allowing the sufferings that they go through to take them out, to change their course, to turn them around, to back them up. That is a person who has a prayer life because that person has already decided that God is their everything, that God can fix everything. That God can be everything to them. They've already decided that. And that they know that they can go to God, cry out to God, and God will hear and answer. That is a person that's walking with God and they're not allowing anything or anybody to interrupt them. That's who that person is. So we've got to be those people that are going to continue In the ways of God. Continue in the life of God. We've got to be those people. But if if we're going to do that, we must apply. Uh, I believe that these are three important things. But, you know, there may be some other things that you can pull from the scripture and say, you know what, I need to do this too. I I can already um, say that uh, worship. Praise and worship would be another thing. That's not what I want to talk about this morning. But listen, we we need to do that too. We need to do that too. Whatever we can do, whatever we can interject to keep us walking with God, let's do it. And then uh, the Apostle Paul goes on to say, be thankful in all circumstances, all circumstances. You're suffering. Are you telling me that while I'm suffering, I have to be thankful? Uh, Yes. I'm simply, I'm simply reiterating. I'm simply uh, uh, re-emphasizing the word. Be thankful. A person with a heart of thanksgiving is a person who trusts God. A person who trusts God, a person with a heart of thanksgiving, they will not allow any circumstance to pull them off the mark or to cause them to fall or falter in their journey with God. 
a person with a heart of thanksgiving. Now, I'm not talking about, oh, I'm thankful for my job. Or I'm thankful for all the money I got. I'm thankful for my big house, and I'm thankful for my five or six cars. No, that's not the thanksgiving I'm talking about. We, Yes, I mean, hey, if I had it, I would be thankful too. But most importantly, I would be even more so thankful if God blessed me with it. Because the scripture tells us in, I believe in Proverbs, that says that the blessings of God maketh rich and they add no sorrow. In other words, you can have all these things. God will bless you with all these things and there will be no sorrow that will come as a result of them. In other words, I have the big house. That's sorrow. That's sorrow. That's if God blessed you with it, the RAS can't take it. I don't care how much they try. They may even send you a letter and say, listen, uh, we understand you own this house. You own these three cars. You haven't paid any taxes, blah, blah, blah. But then yet you have all your tax records and you file taxes, you pay taxes and you you've done everything. But they're after you. But see, this is how God blesses you and keep you. And so. Um, that's not the Thanksgiving I'm referring to. The Thanksgiving I'm referring to is a heart of Thanksgiving towards God who, who blessed you, who gave you life, who can, who kept you in such hard times, the times that we're living in right now. And, uh, with all that happened over the last couple of years, God kept you. He sustained you. He, 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 he protected you. Those are the blessings and the thanksgiving that I'm talking about. God, you kept me. I was able to go to work. God, I was able to even, God, I don't know what happened. I don't even know how it happened. But look, I was able to buy a car in, in, during these hard times. And now I understand that cars are causing $10,000 more than they've ever cost it. A brand new car, $10,000 more. A used car, $7,000 more. That is ridiculous. But God has blessed you to be able to buy one. That's a heart of thanksgiving because you know you couldn't afford it. You know it didn't look like you were able to get it. But God says, you know what? You need transportation because you need to go to work. You need to be on your post in church, and you've been trying to go out and pick up pick up other people and bring them to church. Let me bless you with some transportation. This is the heart of Thanksgiving I'm talking about. And just not thankful for material things, but just thankful that you're living. Thankful that you're, you're in your right mind. Thankful that you can experience God's peace. You can experience God's joy. Just thankful. My God, just thankful. So we have to have the heart of thanksgiving in all circumstances. It says, uh, the apostle Paul wrote to the young church of Thessalonica, and he says, for this is God's will for you who belong to Christ Jesus. My goodness, who belong to Christ, Christ Jesus. This is the will of God to be thankful. And, and and not complaining, not grumbling, not upset, not mad. Thankful, thankful. Listen, if we're able to put these four things together, we can be mighty men and women of God. First of all, we're in the word. We're letting the word continue. We're letting the word be in us. We're, we're, con we're continuing to stay in the word. We're continuing to let the word of God stay in us. Amen. And then uh, we're able, we're able to maintain our focus. Uh, Peter said, Peter said, Peter, the apostle Peter said to us, he says, be vigilant. My God, be vigilant, be vigilant. Isn't that, isn't that powerful? The apostle Peter wrote, he says, uh, excuse, hold on one second. He said, be vigilant. <clears throat> and he says, not only be vigilant, he says, but be sober. Isn't that awesome? He says, be vigilant, be sober. He says, stay alert, stay alert, be focused, be focused. 
so many of us as men and women of God, we do have a lot going on in our lives, especially if we have families. And we can easily be distracted. But the Apostle Peter, according to the New Living Translation, says, stay alert. He says, watch out for your great enemy who's lurking, who's working, lurking, L-U-R-K-I-N-G, lurking and working, W-O-R-K-I-N-G, lurking and working behind the scenes. Listen, when we're asleep, he's working. He's working to get us off the mark. Isn't that something? He's working to cause distractions. He's working to cause um, for us to cause us to lose our focus. But 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 what I've shared with you today again, stay focused, stay alert. And he says because uh, your great enemy, the devil. He prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. And we understand the whole picture. We understand the picture of the lion looking for prey, looking for something for dinner, breakfast, lunch, you name it. Whenever he thinks he's ready to eat, he's looking for prey. And, and we've seen the pictures. Let's, let's visualize a picture of that lion in, in, in uh, the bush, in the bushes, in the tall grass. He's stretched out. He's on his, he's on his belly. And he's, he's moving towards his prey in what, he call, what I would call an attack crawl. Uh, he, he's, 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 he's crawling to get closer to his prey to overpower them, to attack, to attack him. And see, he doesn't, listen, he does not have his eyes closed to his surroundings. He knows what's going on in his surroundings. He's able to see the poor animal that has strayed away from the foe, has strayed away from the pack. He's able to see that. And so he set his sight on that animal, and he set his mind on the precise time to attack. And so is it with the enemy. So is it with our adversary. He's looking for that time. He's watching. And we have to understand that Satan watches us. He, he's watching us. He, he does not have uh, more power than God. He does not have the ability to be uh, omniscient, omnipresent, or anything of that nature, but he watches us. And, and, and when he watches us, he's looking for the precise time of attack. And that's what we need to understand. That's how we need to see this. But if we stay alert, if we stay focused, we're going to be the better. We're going to be blessed for staying focused. We're going to be blessed for not only staying focused, but we're going to be blessed for having a life of prayer where we never stop praying. Listen, we cannot afford to stop praying. The moment we stop praying, will be the moment that Satan decides that he's going, this is my, this is the moment that I can come in. This is the moment that I can creep in. I can do my attack crawl and I can, and I can um, leap into action going after the prey. The moment we stop praying, we cannot afford to stop praying. We've got to keep praying, praying, praying. And listen, let me just, let me emphasize, uh, when I say never stop praying, that does not mean by any means that I am saying to you that I want you to pray all day long, all night long. I'm not saying that. And I'm not saying, because listen, as, as mothers, we have chores to do. We, if we are a mother, we have children. We, we have to 
tend to, we have to give attention to our children. If we are mothers, then I would like to hope. Well, let me just not say it. But if we are mothers, <laughs> we can be mothers and not married in this day and hour. But in some cases, we are mothers and we are married. So we have husbands. Okay, and I'm speaking from that uh, perspective because I'm a female. I have a husband. So we have to give attention to our husband um, in, in whatever aspect. So then we can always be on our knees or prostrated on the floor praying. Or we can't always be praying using our prayer language that some don't believe in. Uh, you know, you, 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 you need to have a conversation with your children. You need to have a conversation with your husband, but you're in your, you're, you know, you're somewhere in your prayer language. Okay. There's a time and a place for everything. All right. Now, so with those things, and then, you know, if you have a house, you have to give attention to your house. You can't always be on the floor praying, get up and clean up and you can pray later. Okay. You have to find times to pray. But that does not mean, oh, I, I can't pray. I need, I can't clean up. I need to pray. I can't cook. I need to pray. I can't wash dishes. I need to pray. No, 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 no. God would be displeased. Because listen, we've said this many, many times in the past, <clears throat> that cleanliness, cleanliness is next to godliness. That is a very true statement. Very true. Now, we may not find that uh, written in the Bible, uh, verbatim as such but it's in there cleanliness is next to godliness God does like cleanliness read Old Testament study Old Testament and and see how specific he was with cleanliness okay and why he was specific about it but listen I'm just trying to, I'm trying to cover all the, all bases. I'm trying to dot all the I's and, and cross all the T's because some people take things literally. If I say pray all day, then they're saying, she must be crazy. Don't nobody have time to pray all day. No. Listen, let me tell you something. I can clean up and I can pray. I can wash dishes and I can still pray. I can cook and I can still pray. And, and of course, I don't have babies anymore. And I can, I can pray with my daughters. They're older. I can pray with them. I don't have to pray. I don't have to ignore them, but I can pray with them. And then I can still uh, communicate with them, and I still have time to pray. So basically what I'm saying to you, and, if, and, and I'm not going into this. I'm not going into this because most people don't believe this way, and that's unfortunate. But. If you knew and understood the prayer language, that the gift that God has given us, oh, my gosh. Listen, I walk four miles almost every morning, almost. If I could walk every, every morning, I would. But then I have, uh, you already know, I'm not, I, I can't do it Sunday morning. Uh, very seldom do I do Saturday, and it's hard for me to do Friday. So Monday through Thursday, I'm walking four miles, and I'm praying. And nothing but prayer. Nothing but prayer. So where there's a will, there's a way. You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. That's Paul to the church at Philippi. We can do all things, 413, through Christ who strengthens us. We can so there's, there are no excuses. And then the last thing that I said, be thankful in all circumstances. We can complain. We can grumble. We can fuss. We can be upset. But God does not like complaining. We should, we should have learned that from the Israelites. When the Israelites were supposed to have a four-day journey, uh, and, you know, some commentators, let me emphasize, let me, uh, interject this, some commentators uh, uh, said through um, their diggings and findings that some say that it was three, some said I've seen as many as 11. But either way, three or 11 or any tw anything in between, that's a short time compared to 40 years, okay? So we can be technical about how many days, but honey, when we compare that to 40 years, we can stop all the technicalities because that's a very short time. I don't care if they, I don't care if it took them 
36 days is still short. If it took them 40 days, still shorter than 40 years. Okay, that's the point I'm making. So um, they grumbled and they complained, and it added to their wilderness wandering. And that's what we don't need to do. It added to their wilderness wandering because it showed their lack of faith and trust in an almighty God. A God who, who demonstrated his love, his power, and his ability with Egypt and with them. The plagues, the ten plagues that he allowed to happen in the face of Israel towards Egypt. That, that was the purpose of that. The purpose of that was to say to, say to the Israelites, listen, I'm finna deliver you. I'm getting ready, excuse me, I'm getting ready to deliver you. I'm getting ready to bring you out of Egypt. And I'm, re- and I'm getting ready to send you to the promised land. I'm going to send you to the promised land, guys. But before I do this, let me demonstrate my great power. Let me show you who I am. Let me show you my ability to keep you, to bless you, and protect you. Let me show you first. Do y'all mind if I show you first? That's what God was saying to the Israelites. Let me show you first. And when he did that, he demonstrated himself to them. And he showed them, listen, I don't care how bad it looks when you get out here, when I deliver you out of Egypt. I don't care how hard it gets. I don't care what you think, but I am the one. I am, I am, I am, I am. And he told Moses to tell Pharaoh that I am the I am. And and he was saying the same thing to Israel. But listen, guys, I'm going to have to get ready to bring this to a close. But I tell you what, I have enjoyed teaching this lesson. I've enjoyed sharing this lesson with you. I want you to continue in the faith. I want you to stay focused. I want you to hang in there with God. And let God be God. Let him be God. You don't have to be God. Let God be God. You just hang in with him. It's just like taking a walk in the park with a friend or, uh, or, or, or your spouse or your children. You're walking together. You're enjoying each other. You're benefiting from whatever it is that, that, ha- that can be offered, the joy that that person has the conversation that that person has, the thanksgiving that that person has, whatever it is, the understanding, the knowledge, you're benefiting from that. That's how it is with God. Let God be God. Walk with him. Keep, stay with him, and be all that you need to be. You do your part, and I guarantee you God will do his part. So as we get ready to bring this to a close, and I just want to send a shout-out for Pastor Jimmy and the Noonan City Church. Thank you, Pastor Jimmy, for being with us on last Thursday as we um, met the community with Chief Blankenship. And thank you for um, hosting this broadcast. And thank you for just walking with God yourself and continuing with him. We bless you. We give God all the honor, the praise, and the glory. And until we are able to be with you again in this radio broadcast, be blessed, be safe, and most of all, continue with God. Thank you. You've been around long enough to know good stuff when you hear it. That's why you're here now. Classic Hits, WQEE 99.1 FM. Streaming now, Bel Air, a new Peacock original series. Where are we going? You're going to stay with your aunt and your uncle. From executive producer Will Smith and Westbrook Studios. Do you know why I'm here from Philly? Scrap on the bull court, go nasty. You get one shot. Give this a real chance. So you can show these rich people how much you care about poor black kids from the hood? At a second chance. Why are we working so hard to save a boy who doesn't want to be saved? Because we owe it to him. There's no going back. Bel Air, streaming now with new episodes every Thursday, only on Peacock. The world around us is smart. We think your education should be smart, too. 
With the FlexPath learning format from Capella University, you can set your own deadlines and leverage your experience to move forward at your pace. Visit capella.edu to learn more. Capella University. Don't just learn, learn smarter.